Okay, so let's continue on to problem number two. ITI is using an aging accounts receivable method. At its December 31st year end, total accounts receivable is 89,000, aged as followed. Um, so the aging method is one of two methods that we use. It's more complicated, but it's more accurate. So it's gonna take um, a balance sheet approach um, and looks at the age of each accounts receivable. Um, so remember two methods here. Uh, percentage of credit sales and the aging. So we're not doing percentage of credit sales here, um, which is the income statement approach, the age of each accounts receivable. Um, and based on the age, right, each amount in the accounts receivable at the end of the period, the older and more overdue, the less likely it will be collected, collectible, or the rate of uncollectability will be higher as the time goes on, right? So maybe 40% of people don't pay 90 or more days outstanding accounts receivable. Um, and so first age accounts receivable. So we wanna see how much is owed that is in zero to 30 days. And it could be a different time frame. It could be zero to 60 days, depending on how the company uh, plans out its accounts receivable. And then we wanna look at um, the total accounts receivable. We're gonna estimate it uncollectible or estimate the bad debt loss percentage for each category and then multiply here. And so we expect of the zero to 30 days, 1200 is gonna go bad. Of the 31 to 60, 4500 is gonna go bad. And so after we've multiplied down and we're gonna sum across to the left. So usually we sum across to the right, but anyway, the schedule we're gonna sum across to the left. And then you see, this is what we wanna see at the end. So this is what we wanna have at the end. This method does take into account our beginning unadjusted balance. And then we want to make an adjusting journal entry. Uh, this account is an, a contra asset, which is typically a credit balance. So we want to adjust so that we're at the right amount. Um, and we're going to use that same journal entry that we've used before, debit our bad debt expense and credit our allowance for doubtful accounts. So our adjusting journal entry does go in there and our bad debt expense is going to go up. Um, so let's do that entry. And we're gonna do, do a calculation as I promised um, that we would do. Let me pull up my in-class assignment. Okay, so we have this schedule and it says at December 31st, accounts receivable 89,000 is aged as follows. So I'm gonna put 89,000 total is aged as follows, 75,000. And that, so I've already made those categories for you. So they did one to 30 days is 75,000. 31 to 90 days group, so this is group two, is 10,000. And 90 or more days is 4,000. And then the rates of uncollectability for group one is 10%, for group two, 20, and group three is 40. So I'm just gonna put the 10, the 20, and the 40 here. Oh, sorry, we need to move that over. Um, Just one over. So there's not one grand total. We're not just gonna use um, one average percent or anything like that. So we want to um, match the group. That was group number one, 10, 20, and 40. Okay, so then we can multiply here. This would probably be good in Excel, um, but let's see if it'll copy over. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 70,000 by 1%, and I can use that across the board. So I'm going to have 7,500 2,000 and 1,600 when I multiply down. So I'm gonna see if that'll copy over fine. I don't know if it will. Not quite, not perfect. Um, so we'll move that over here and then we're gonna sum back to the left, which is not typical, but we're gonna sum back to the left and see what do we wanna see in this aging um, allowance for doubtful accounts. That was what we want to see at the end using our best aging methods are more accurate. I'm going to sum all of these back together. So the 7,500 and the 2,000 and the 1,600 is going to be summed back together um, on the left-hand side. And I get 11,100 is what we are expecting from our calculation. So I gave you this number in, a, in the previous in-class assignment. Um, but now you're calculating using aging, aging method. So we're going to want to use that and plop that right into our desired balance is 11,100. 
And really we need to see if there already is a unadjusted balance or beginning balance. And so before the end of the year, entry is made the allowance for doubtful accounts uh, has a 1,600 credit balance. So debit credit, it's going to be on the credit side, 1,600. And so we want to see an adjusting journal entry um, to increase um, from 1,600 to 11,100. So I could take the, take the difference, 11,100, and we're going to minus the 1,600. Uh, so Excel doesn't like those comma, commas in there. I know it doesn't. So oh, let's try that again, 11,100 minus 1,600. Um, so adjusting journal entry should be 9,500. So, and I could double check that. I always want to double check that. If I do 1,600 plus uh, 9,500, that looks like 11, 10, 11. Yep, that looks fine. Um, so 1,600, we're going to adjust for 9,500. And those two added together does equal the balance that I want to see, just to double check. So that's what's going to be our adjusting journal entry over here that we've now calculated. And this one has some grid lines in there. So T account would look like this. Um, I would debit bad debt expense. And this is a, a way of estimating, right, within the period, um, how much our accounts receivable could go bad. This is an estimating um, our al allowance for doubtful accounts, and we are matching our expense to our revenue. So we've sold, we've made revenue, um, and we have this accounts receivable that goes along with the revenue. Um, and we're matching our expense of bad debt expense to the same period that we make the revenue and that we're following the matching principle. And allowance. And that's our contra asset. Increase a contra asset or decrease an asset. And I'll make this a little bit smaller. Okay, now show how the various accounts related to accounts receivable, receivable should be shown on the December 31st balance sheet. Um, so accounts receivable, they said that our total accounts receivable is 89,000. 89,000 over here is what I would write in, 89,000. And then we've estimated our allowance for doubtful accounts really is the ending balance. This desired balance should be their ending balance. So that's really what's gonna be dropped into this area um, because we've adjusted so that it is that amount. And then we'd wanna take the difference of those and that would be our net accounts receivable. Um, and I would just do a calculation because I don't know if I trust my mental math right now. Um, so I would do 89,000 subtract 11,100. And so they'd have 77,900 in their accounts receivable balance. And remember, uh, this is a contra asset, so you see this less. Um, our allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset, and our net accounts receivable would be 77,900. So please complete this assignment and submit it on Canvas. And thank you for your work. I'll see you later.